Canadian singer songwriter, dancer, model, and actress Denise Katrina Matthews, professionally known as Vanity, was born in Niagara Falls, Ontario on January 4, 1959. Her mother, of German and Polish Jewish descent, and her African American father would also have two other daughters together. She also has several half siblings on her father's side. It was at the tender age of five that Denise proclaimed she would be an actress build a church for Jesus, and live in a castle when she grew up. She revealed in an interview with Jet Magazine in 1993 that her father physically and verbally abused her for years. Unfortunately, her mother couldn't come to her rescue since she too was being abused, and she also suffered some brain trauma after going through the windshield in a horrible car accident, sinking into depression and alcoholism. Denise also experienced sexual molestation as a child. As she got older, she began entering local beauty pageants. She won the Miss Niagara Hospitality title in 1977 and went on to compete for Miss Canada the following year. She eventually moved to Toronto to begin her modeling career. At the age of 17, she moved to New York City to take advantage of more modeling opportunities. She signed with an agency, however, because of her height, or lack thereof, the job she was able to get was limited to commercials and photo shoots instead of runway work. Denise met funk rock icon Prince while attending the American Music Awards in 1980, with Rick James, no less. It definitely wasn't love at first sight, on her end anyway. However, they did begin dating shortly after, and he would be the one to rename her Vanity. Vanity was actually the second choice after she rejected his first suggestion of the name for a female body part beginning with the same letter. She was always interested in pursuing a career in singing and acting. However, she was constantly discouraged to do so by those around her. That is until Prince came along. He asked her to be the lead singer of a girl group he was putting together named Vanity Six. The Six, apparently a reference to the number of breasts in the group. Prince created the whole Vanity Six image. It bothered me at the time. I lied and said it was the image I wanted. I did it because he told me I had to do it. If I didn't do it, I wouldn't get paid. I got into it. I wanted the old Diana Ross image. The funky, erotically charged ensemble recorded one album and had international success with their 1982 pop hit, Nasty Girl. Prince also decided to put her in the lead female role in his 1984 semi-autobiographical film, Purple Rain. However, Vanity had a falling out with her Svengali, before filming began, allegedly due to his unfaithfulness. She would also leave Vanity Six. The film would be a big box office hit and feature actress-singer-model Apollonia in the role Vanity passed up. Vanity would later admit in interviews that she didn't see the movie because she knew it would bring back old memories and make her cry. After leaving the group, she signed with Motown Records and made two solo albums, Wild Animal and Skin on Skin. She wrote much of the material on both. She played up her sexy and racy image, which often included performing in lingerie. She also lived a wild and fast lifestyle that eventually would take its toll. She starred in the movies The Last Dragon, 52 Pickup, Never Too Young to Die, and Action Jackson, the movie that featured her in her highest profile role opposite Carl Weathers, Craig T. Nelson, and Sharon Stone. From the mid-80s to the early 90s, Vanity guest starred on numerous TV shows such as Miami Vice and Highlander. She also appeared nude in Playboy in April 1988. In addition to Prince, Vanity was also linked romantically to a couple of English blokes, singer-musicians Adam Ant, who wrote the track Vanity about her on his Strip album, as well as Billy Idol. Vanity announced in 1987 that she and Motley Crue bass player Nikki Six were engaged. However, they never ended up getting married. In his memoir, The Heroine Diaries, A Year in the Life of a Shattered Rock Star, Nikki Six shared shocking details of their volatile relationship that also included drug use. 
1994, Vanity overdosed on crack cocaine and suffered from near fatal renal failure. She was rushed to the hospital and doctors said she had just three days to live while on life support. She recalled that Jesus appeared to her at this time and spoke to her saying, if she promised to give up her vanity persona, he would save her. Upon her recovery, she completely renounced her stage name and career and became a born again Christian. Years later in interviews, Denise would also go into detail about being possessed by demons for many years. They attacked her, her home, and the people in her home. To cope, she became involved in psychic work and actually believed she was honoring God. During that time, she was incredibly unhappy and constantly prayed to God to either help her or just let her die. She would eventually walk down the aisle on the arm of Anthony Smith, a former football player for the Oakland Raiders, in 1995 on her first anniversary of sobriety. At the time, Vanity was working as an evangelist in San Jose. She read about Anthony's philanthropic activities and decided to reach out to him. Three days after they met, she proposed to him, and one month later, they were married. However, from the start, they argued quite often due to their extremely different personalities. Denise, with her giving and compassionate nature, had a habit of inviting homeless people into their home to offer them food and a shower. She would even give out her personal phone number. Anthony, on the other hand, had a very volatile nature. He would also be unfaithful. Not surprisingly, their union would end the following year. It seems that Denise escaped what could have been a tragic situation for herself. In the future, Anthony would be arrested for domestic violence involving another woman, and in 2016, he would be convicted of three murders and sentenced to three consecutive life terms in prison. After a kidney transplant in 1997, Denise dedicated the rest of her life full-time to Christ. She would tell her truth and nothing but the truth in her autobiography, Blame It on Vanity, Hollywood, Hell, and Heaven. She's been asked over the years if she feels Prince did a disservice to her by bringing her into the crazy Hollywood world of sex, drugs, and rock and roll. She emphatically denies that anyone made her do anything and that's why she titled her book, Blame It on Vanity. She takes full responsibility for everything that's transpired in her life. In September 2014, Denise started a GoFundMe to raise money for the republishing of her book. She then planned to use the crowdfunding to pay for her medical bills. Years ago, she chose not to receive any further revenue from her work as Vanity after she cut off all ties with Hollywood and her former life in show business. Due to kidney problems from her 10-year crack cocaine addiction, she had already had 23 surgeries and was currently on dialysis three times a week. Her health worsened in 2015 after she was diagnosed with sclerosing encapsulating peritonitis, a rare benign cause of small bowel obstruction. Denise died on February 15, 2016 in Fremont, California due to kidney failure. She was 57 years old. Among those who paid tribute to her after her passing were drummer Sheila E., The Roots frontman Questlove, and executive producer for The Last Dragon, Barry Gordy. Former lover Prince, who would also pass away just two months later, dedicated several songs to her during a show in Australia. Rapper MC Hammer tweeted that he had just attended church with her two days prior on Saturday. He had hoped she would return the next day as well and even looked for her. Then the announcement came that she had fallen ill during the night. She was childlike in her exuberance for God. She loved and trusted him wholeheartedly. Heaven is hers. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and comment. Also, don't forget to subscribe and turn on your notifications so you won't miss any future videos. See you next time!